in, we'll throw the guitar in. This video is going to take you through the basics of enabling guitar to MIDI or pitch to MIDI on the Boss SY1000. So uh, for this demo, I've got a Boss SY1000. MIDI out from the SY1000 is going to MIDI in on a Behringer Deep Mine. Both the Boss and the Behringer are set to MIDI channel 1. And I've got a patch 15.3 pulled up and I play the guitar and I don't hear anything. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our system settings and just turn on guitar to MIDI. So I'm under system, if I look under uh, MIDI setting, here's guitar to MIDI and I'm just gonna switch and that's gonna turn it on. What? I heard something there on my E string, so I know something's working. I'm not getting the other strings yet and I'll tell you why. But as long as we're here, let's just check one other thing, and that is that the bend range is set to two semitones, and the basic channel is channel one. The Behringer set to channel one, the SY1000 is set to channel one. The Behringer also expects that pitch bend information is gonna be sent expecting a pitch range of two semitones. This way, the bend that I do on the SY1000 is gonna sound the same on the receiving MIDI module, and I have the hold pedal set to control three. I've got a pedal, an on-off switch, uh, plugged into the back of the SY1000 in control three. And later on down the road, we're going to use that for some sustain effects. So uh, looking at my patch, I noticed that I got a sound when I played the high E string, but nothing from the other strings. Let's add in the guitar. So here's what's going on. By default, if we go to the control expression setup in the SY1000, we're gonna see that the guitar to MIDI mode is set to mono. And I'm, I don't know why that is because it's really hard these days to find a MIDI module that responds in mono mode. In mono mode, each string on the guitar would have a different MIDI channel. So high E would be channel one, and then B would be MIDI channel two, and then G would be MIDI channel three, but very few modules have been made that support this, like say in the last 20 years. Uh, in 1985, you could find a lot of modules that would do this. The, the Roland MKS-70 responded to MIDI mono mode. So we're gonna switch it to poly mode, which means all of the pitch to MIDI information from the SY-1000 is gonna be coming on one channel, and that's channel one, and that's great because that's the channel that we have the uh, the Deep Mind 12 setup. So let's try and play a chord again. So if you want to get pitch to MIDI going on the SY1000, really that's just the two things you need to do. Go to System, turn on Guitar to MIDI, and then take whatever patch you're on and go to Guitar to MIDI and, and switch the mode from mono to poly. That's probably going to be uh, the, the two key things that you need to do. Once you've done that, you're, you're pretty far down the road. But let's look at some of the other settings we have. Um, Chromatic mode, we're going to get to alternate tuning here in a second, but as long as we have this page open, let's talk about how pitch bends are handled. Now, we, we mentioned that we have both the receiving module and the SY1000 expecting a pitch bend range of two semitones. So the most I'm going to bend is going to be two semitones. I can't bend outside of that range. So let's play a little bit on the guitar and see how that works. And we'll throw the guitar in. Now that works fine for one note, but we can't bend more than one note because if you look at a keyboard, there's like maybe one pitch bend wheel. You don't have a pitch bend wheel for every single key on the keyboard, which is what you would need on a guitar. And that's kind of the trade-off between MIDI mono mode and MIDI poly mode. If we were actually in mono mode, each string would have its own pitch bend, but we don't have that. But I think this is a pretty good compromise. What's gonna happen is, when I play one note, the SY1000 will transmit that pitch bend information. But if I play more than one note, it's gonna discard the pitch bend information and just move the bends as if I was stepping through different keys on the keyboard. So let's hear what that sounds like.
So you can hear there's that chromatic step when we bend more than one note. Let's hear what that sounds like with the guitar. That's kind of neat. It's sort of like a keyboard player doubling along uh, with the guitar player. So that's with chromatic mode off. And I find that very useful because I don't have to think about do I want chromatic mode on or off? If I'm bending a string, I get the bend. If I'm playing a chord, it's as if the MIDI module's being played on a keyboard. So it's kind of a nice blend between the perfect uh, intonation of the keyboard and what you may have the slight imperfections with playing on the guitar. We do have some other choices though. We can turn chromatic mode to type one. Now with type one, we're gonna hear that as we bend a note up or down, it's going to step through the different keys. Let, let, sorry, let's just go to the keyboard only. So that's kind of neat. We don't have the, the, the bend, but it's going to step it through chromatically. We have another choice, which is type two. Now, with chromatic mode two and three, as we do the bend, it actually re-triggers new notes as if you're playing a new note on the keyboard rather than just bending an existing note. So let's hear what that sounds like. It's tracking the dynamics of how we play. So when you first play a note on the guitar, it's you know, you've got your maximum attack and then it's going to start to decay pretty quickly. So as we do these bends, it's following the dynamics of the string. So the subsequent notes are going to be a little bit softer. We have another choice, which is type three. And in type three, those subsequent notes in the bend, they're just going to ignore any dynamics and they're all going to be played at the same volume level. So to me, that kind of sounds a little artificial. Let's hear what that sounds like with the guitar. I mean, it kind of can be cool in, in the right circumstance. I'm going to go back to just turning chromatic off because again, I, I like that a lot. I don't have to think one way or the other about uh, any sort of a chromatic mode. And let's talk about dynamic. So I, I do find it a little hard to always appreciate the difference between dynamics and feel. But in the case of dynamics, it seems like what we're doing is we are limiting the actual values of the, of the MIDI velocity. MIDI velocity goes from, from zero to 127. And we choose the um, lowest level of the dynamics. It seems like we get the widest range. Sorry, let's... Hear the synth only. And if we turn dynamics to a higher number, let's say we'll just go all the way up to nine for some extreme difference, it's all kind of just loud. So the softest note is, is louder than the softest note was when it was just two. The other choice that we have in, in terms of sort of evaluating the overall dynamics of how we're playing is feel. And we have four different feel modes and it says it's based on your, your picking style. But to me, feel one has the widest dynamic range and feel four has the least dynamic range. So here is uh, feel one. And we're gonna go up to feel four just for contrast. doesn't seem like it really matters how hard or how soft I play. All the notes come out to being close to the same volume level. That is definitely true with the last choice, which is no dynamics, which means every note's going to trigger full on. That's pretty good when you're working with hammer-ons and pull-offs where they're just not going to be at the same volume level as, as a, a note that's clearly picked. So I'm going to go back to feel one and as you work with the SY-1000, you'll probably find that depending on the synth sound you're using, some settings work better than other settings. And that's nice because this is saved on a per patch basis. So you can set up certain patches on the SY-1000 specifically for certain MIDI sounds that you might be triggering. So the next thing we have to look at is the low velocity cut. And basically this is a threshold of where the SY-1000 is going to ignore softly played notes. So you may have some ghost notes, notes that you didn't intend to play. Maybe a string is continuing to ring off and, and a MIDI note will trigger and it's going to sound kind of awkward, maybe completely wrong. So you can say, 
what is the lowest threshold where a note will trigger? So I'll play softly and you'll see when the note starts to come in. So as, as soon as I give it just a good hard strike, it's going to trigger. If I raise this, say maybe to eight, I have to play a lot harder just to get the note to trigger. And you know, this is handy, particularly if you're really good at being clear and definitive in your picking style uh, and you're good at muting, you can really get rid of a lot of ghost notes. I'm not that good, so I'm going to just set this back to three. Uh, the next setting to look at is the hold setting. And this is kind of, a, uh, I think, one of the more creative and interesting settings on the SY-1000. So I'm going to change up patches. I've been using a piano sound, which you know may not be the, the sound that you're looking for. Uh, when you're doing pitch to MIDI and go with something that's a little bit broader. We'll go with a, a, a string pad sound. And let's hear what uh, this sounds like. So we're going to start off with hold mode one. I can say maybe play a, a, a D chord. And then as I move this chord up the neck, what's going to happen is the low string will continue to sustain the D. It's going to sustain as long as I've got my foot on the sustain pedal that I plugged into control input three. But as I move the chord up the neck, it's going to re-trigger those sounds so I don't just get a big wash of mush. So let's see what that sounds like. I tried to do that with a traditional sustain pedal in a keyboard, all of those notes would have been ringing off and it would have just been a train wreck by the time I got to the end. Now the next mode that we have is hold mode two where notes sustain but no new notes are going to be added. So let's choose hold mode two. So I'm going to play that same chord. see that as I played more notes, nothing was added, but this is kind of neat for soloing over. So let's try that again, and I'm going to bring in the guitar sound. That's kind of nice. It's something kind of hard to pull off with just a, a, a sustain pedal on a regular keyboard. And then finally, we're going to go to uh, hold mode three where we can play the chord, sustain the chord, but then we can add new notes on top of it. So let's see what that sounds like. So those three notes are going to continue to sustain, but I can then add new solo notes on top of it without those being held. So the last thing to cover is alternate tuning. So I'm going to uh, call up patch 12.3, which is a, a detuned open C. Now, let's take that same piano sound that we were using before, and we're going to layer that with the guitar sound, and let's uh, see what that sounds like. It's an interesting sound. It's the sound of two instruments playing kind of in two different keys at the same time. And that's because the SY-1000 is using an alternate tuning on instrument three, whereas what we're getting from the piano is just regular MIDI notes. Uh, 
So that's what we're getting from the piano, and this is what we're getting from the SY-1000. So the last setting we have, as far as pitch to MIDI is concerned, uh, lets us figure out how we're gonna handle these alternate tunings. So under alternate tuning, it was one of the first things we looked at, and I said we'd get back to it. I can select instrument three. I happen to know in this particular patch that instrument three is the one that has the alternate tuning. So now the piano and the SY-1000 are gonna be playing in the same key. So I hope this is helpful. This will cover some of the uh, pitch to MIDI settings with the SY-1000. Again, the first thing you need to know if you're, when you're setting this up is to go to your system, enable the pitch to MIDI out, and then on a per patch basis, you'll probably find yourself having to enable the uh, mode from mono mode to poly mode. And then there's a lot of cool stuff you can do as far as uh, using the, uh, the hold pedal with using uh, the different chromatic settings. Some of the things you may stick with more on a global basis will be the feel settings. But I, I hope you found this uh, useful, and I'll be posting some more videos as well in the future.